the place where we come to learn about life on Earth and our neighbors in the animal kingdom. Why do you call wild animals our neighbors? We don't live in the same place as they do. <laughs> Hello, Gigi. Oh, I live in a house on a street. My neighbor is someone who lives in the house next door. Think of it this way. We are all on Earth together with other people, wild animals, trees, in fact, every other living thing. So these are all our neighbors. And besides, there are places where people live closer to animals, almost exactly like neighbors. Except the animals live in the wild and the people live in the villages near them. Ah, now I see. I wonder what it's like to live that close to wild animals. The ones I've seen have got big teeth and they are really strong. And I get the feeling they don't really like us. Mm, I wonder if the animals feel like we don't like them. Why do you think that? Because we're not always kind to them. They call it human wildlife conflict. That's when we can't live together in peace with our animal neighbors. Who doesn't love animals? What I'm wondering is what wild animals feel about us. If they have any feelings, how would we know? Mm, there's one way to find out, and that is to get to know them better. And no better way to do that but to go and visit them on a safari. <laughs> Please tell me we're going to meet elephants. They're my favorite animals. Me too. Let's go. Hi kids! Hi! Lillian is my name. I'm a ranger guide of Maxion Falls National Park. It's the largest national park in Uganda, within which we have 76 different mammals Whoa. and 451 bird species, among which we have four of the big five. Have you ever heard about the big five? Yes. I know the big five, the elephant, yes. the lion, yes. the leopard, yes. the buffalo, yes. and... Uh, and uh, what? Hippo? Is the hippo also the big five? Good try. So the fifth, fifth is a rhino. We don't have the rhinoceros here, but we have the rhinoceros in the sanctuary. We shall see a lot of elephants. We shall see a lot of giraffes, different antelopes. They are hyenas. They are different small cats, genet cats, yes. Are we excited to go? Yay! Let's get into the car. Elephants are known to be the biggest land mammals. Did you know that? Yeah. So the biggest African elephant may go to about six to seven tons, or six to seven thousand kilograms. So we are here before a very big herd of elephants. A group of them, we call it a herd, mm -hmm. which is headed by the oldest female. female a herd is male. yes. The smallest unit is a family where you find mother and her young ones, mm -hmm. but in most cases you also find mother with the siblings. Mm -hmm. Otherwise for males, the moment they reach adolescent, they leave the group. Elephant facts. Elephant. Elephants are world's largest land animal. Male African elephants are up to three meters tall and weigh up to six tons. That is 6,000 kilograms. That's also the average weight of three rhinos, or two hippos, or 200 children in fifth grade. Isn't that a cool elephant? Elephant trunks have superpowers. Okay, not exactly the magic type of superpowers you may be thinking of, but check this out. Elephants have around 150,000 muscle units in their trunk which may be the most sensitive organ in any mammal. At the trunk's tip, African elephants have two fingers. They can use them to pick up a single blade of grass or hold a paintbrush. 
Elephants use their trunk to communicate through trumpet-like sounds. They use it to suck up water to drink and as a snorkel when swimming. Elephants are constantly eating. Elephants need about 150 kilograms of food every day. That's a lot of grass. They eat so much that they can spend most of their day chewing. And then they can poop up to 100 kilograms of dung a day. Isn't that a cool elephant? Elephant facts. Elephants. <coughs> have a short trunk. Short trunks are a result of poaching. You see this one yeah. behind? Do you see the trunk? Yeah. You realize it is a half one? Yeah. Though at the almost the tip. Poachers come and lay wire snares in most cases to trap the small antelopes. Antelopes, buffaloes, and at the end of the day, because the same environments where we find the antelopes are the same environments where these ones sometimes also feed, mm. so they end up getting trapped. So because they are strong enough, they pull the wires off, but still in the process, the wire will tighten the trunk. And in the long run, it will cause a wound that may result into rotting. After rotting, of course, it will cut off. Mm -hmm. So it becomes disabled, like a human being, maybe you lose a hand. What is the value of a trunk on other elephants? But uh, the trunk uses for cleaning them mm -hmm. and also drinking water. Yes, and that's breaking so good. Breaking food. Mm -hmm. That it can pull almost like a whole branch from that tree. But the trunk is, is acts as a hand to mm -hmm. pick a lot of objects. Okay. It is also used to hug a friend. So basically their trunk is like our hand. In case he loses a trunk, it would be like a human who is one armed. Yeah, so if it's shorter, it will be a challenge. It would be a challenge. Yeah. Look at this young elephant. His trunk is really short. See how difficult it is for him to get food? Ranger Lillian told us that there is a very big problem called the human wildlife conflict. It means that the wild animals are disturbing people living nearby and the people are disturbing the wild animals. But both the communities and the park authorities have been working on peaceful solutions. That is so cruel. To cripple an elephant and for what? Those elephants don't seem to be doing anything to anybody. We're the ones doing terrible things to them. We have to do better. I mean, how hard is it? For some people, it's really hard. They think the animals are there for them to make money, so they go into areas where the animals live and they do really, really cruel things to them because they don't think the animals have a right to be here and they don't want to know that animals suffer and can feel pain when they're shot and trapped. Is that what they mean when they say people are poaching the animals? Exactly right. Poaching is cruel and dangerous. And it makes me really sad that we have to see the things that Ranger Lillian is going to show us. We are here to see some of the wild wheel traps and wire snares that are used to poach the animals and most especially the elephants. This is a mountain of snares. Wow. And these snares are actually picked from actually the different parts of the park, and they are usually set by poachers. Oh. Poaching is a legal killing of wildlife, either for domestic use or for commercial use. How many snares are here? Thousands and thousands of snares. In a day, when we conduct patrols, we can collect more than 15 snares. A day? A day. Wow. This is called a wheel trap. And a wheel trap is usually targeting the big game. The big game, we have the elephants, we have the buffaloes, we have the hippos. So when the animal puts its leg there, it is trapped, OK? I see one of these wheel traps here, and I can see a buffalo's hoof stuck in it. Oh, so yes. they're targeting the leg of the buffalo so it doesn't move. Exactly. And usually when the leg is broken, it has no power to move. It becomes weak, and it is killed eventually. Who can tell me what this is? Buffalo horn. Buffalo horn. And uh, what do you think happened? Um, it got cut by a snare. It must have been caught in a snare. This must have been a very huge buffalo and it was killed by poachers. So what does, is this one used for? This is another type of snare. You can see it is different. Usually this is targeting animals like hippos, 
they bury them and they cover soil on them. So when the hippo is walking, it steps there. The nails are too sharp. So it keeps they are so the huge. Thing. And so they weaken the animal and it cannot move any further. It becomes weak. What the poachers use for that? This is a small snare, okay? Usually these are for small antelopes, like the cobs, okay? Like the water bugs. Heart beast. Heart beast. And after they have been, uh, the animal has been trapped, they use those spears to kill and finish the animal. Like by throwing it? By throwing it on the animal. I have a question. Do you, do you normally arrest them or the poachers? Very good question. Yes, the poachers are always arrested. And when we have arrested them, we take them to police. They are detained, and then later they are taken to court and prosecuted. We are, uh, we are What does they are prosecuted? Prosecuted is uh, taking them to court, uh, are able to charge them accordingly, according to the offenses they have committed. Is there another way that you can prevent poaching? Awareness is the most important thing. I and my other colleagues go on the radio to make sure that we sensitize people out there that poaching is very bad. When you poach, you can be taken to court. If you see an animal that's injured from, uh, from these ones, do you like go over that? Oh yes, when it is injured and it is not killed, we have a veterinary doctor here who is specialized in treating some of these animals. And that's how we met Dr. Margaret. Many times wildlife are stronger than the wires that are laid. So they get caught in the wire, they struggle, and they get themselves off. They actually cut off the wire. The wire stays on them. They are in, in a lot of pain. And so my role as a veterinarian is to ensure that trap gets removed, the animal gets treated, and then it improves and comes back to life. When we find it like this, now we have to dart it. It's a special syringe in which you can load drugs. This is the gun that you use for shooting. The, the gun has a sniper. Then you put it in, and then you close it, and then you cock your gun, and then you shoot. And then when the, that reaches the animal, then it discharges the drug. And then the animal sleeps. You cut off the wire. And you treat it. You wash the wound. You spray it with antibiotic uh, spray. And then you let him go. We asked Dr. Margaret about the half trunk elephants that we had met in the park. Naturally, the elephant takes the trunk around grass and shrubs and removes it and puts, uses the same trunk to put it in the mouth. An elephant that has lost the trunk will have to kneel down and get the grass and so it's going to eat less food and it will drink less water. It's not going to breathe very normally. It will, if it's a female, it will have less babies, and then that affects the population of the elephants. It affects a whole series of ecological parameters when a single elephant loses a trunk to a wire snare. If the elephant is not able to push off the trees and to put down the grass, then the animals like the Uganda cob and the buffalo, which eat real grass only, they don't have enough grass anymore. And here is one of Dr. Margaret's favorite patients, recently rescued from poachers. This is an oribi. It is one of the smallest antelopes that we have in Uganda. This oribi was actually picked because the poachers had killed the mother. And so after killing the mother, she was left helpless. So we had to pick her and bring her here and start giving her milk. Are you going to release her? We are going to release this oribi to the world. 
but of course not near the community because she's so much used to human beings. I thought everyone loved elephants as much as we do. Me too. Why do they hurt them? I think some people do it for money. Maybe they think that they can get rich from doing it. Other people do it because they think the animal is better dead than alive. So they can use pieces of it for different reasons. And sometimes people do it because they are concerned about animals eating their crops. I still don't understand how they can be so cruel. Maybe they don't think animals have feelings or rights like we do. We all have feelings and we all have rights. The animals have a right to feel safe. I agree. And what makes me feel better is that for every person who poaches and hurts animals, there's someone like Arinja Lillian who tries to keep them safe. Yes, and Dr. Margaret heals animals that are injured by the traps and snares. But I think we need to do more. Sure, Penzi, Liam and Trish have got more to show us. Let's go and find out. There's a special control room within the unit where rangers receive and react to signals of poaching. What's that? Uh, the Earth Ranger is one of the tools we are using inside the park to monitor the situation in and around the park. This is a map of Murchison Falls, and we're able to get signals. You can see something that looks like phones. Eh? You can see it. Oh, yes, yeah. Aha, uh -huh. so those are signals. Yeah. There are two poultry comes uh -huh. over here. Quite a number of you, quite a number of incidences. There are those reports about poaching. There are those that report of elephants going out to communities from the park. Elephant recovery. Okay. I also see here wire snares. Wire snares recovered. recovered. Yes, those are wire snares that have been recovered inside the park by the rangers when they're doing their patrols. I've also got another signal. Can we actually follow uh, and I show you where these, these poachers, how they set the snares? Yeah, yes. that would be good. Yes. Cool. The coordinates are leading me somewhere. Yes, 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 yes. Aha. Uh -huh. This is a snare set on a tree. Ah. Okay? It's, yes. it's so invisible. The snare is there. Ah, and when the animal is passing, thinking there is nothing, it traps the animal through the stomach. It can even trap a buffalo, it can trap a hippo. Rangers go walking inside the park, trying to look where they detect any illegal activity. Are we going to get this now and take it back to us? Yes, we're going to remove it now, so that it doesn't trap the animals. Yes, 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 yes. The snare has been successfully removed. Let's take a moment to slow down and focus. Taking some time to pause is good for us, to help us stay calm. Elephants have a very good memory. They can remember all the people that they've met and all the places that they've been. Perhaps you have a very good memory too. Can you remember some of your favorite and happy moments? Maybe a time you spent playing with your best friend? Or when you visited your grandma and she cooked your favorite meal? Or when you got an A on that difficult test? or when you learned to ride a bicycle all by yourself. What is your favorite memory? It's good to remember the happy times we've had and to store these memories just like an elephant does. Elephant facts. Elephants. <coughs> elephant tasks are their teeth. Tasks first appear when elephants are two years old and continue growing throughout their lives. Elephants use their tusks to defend themselves, to lift objects, to dig, to gather, and to strip bark from trees for food. Isn't that a cool elephant? Elephants are thick-skinned. An elephant's skin is 2.5 centimeters thick in most places. That's thicker than your thumb! The folds and wrinkles in their skin can store water, which helps to cool them down in the hot savanna, which is their home. Elephants protect themselves from sunburn by taking dust and mud baths. Isn't that a cool elephant? Elephant facts. Elephant. We are here to meet uh, a different section of. Uh, 
ant poaching unit, which is called the canine unit. These are the dog handlers. Dogs? dogs? Yes. Wow. Yes, so we are going to see that department that deals with dogs to make sure that they identify any wildlife product that is trending on the market. You see? Yeah. Wow. She's training, she's doing with her dogs. Hello. Hi, Kelly. How are you? Fine. Say hello to my boy. He's Hi. called Eddie. Say hello from there. Hi, Eddie. He's my workmate. We work together looking for wildlife products that people are trafficking. How old is he? In three years. Three years. Where was yes. he born from? Was he born here in Uganda? He was born in England. Oh, wow. Uh, transferred to to Tanzania, where he did his training from. What is he exactly doing? When we are working, we let people put their luggages aside and we tell them to go outside. Yeah. And we, with my dog, mm. we sniff around. For Wildlife products like ivory, mm. pangolin, rhino horn, mm. lion teeth, crocodile skins. In most cases, the poachers kill wild animals just for their horns or teeth. Miss Caroline and her dog work at the borders, for example at the airports, and check travelers' luggage. Poachers often smuggle wildlife products abroad to sell them for a big profit. I'd like to show you how my dog works, but I would request you take a step back, like three steps back. Because yeah. my dog when? is jumpy, he loves playing, he may jump on you and do... Okay, good boy. So, so. Good boy, suck, suck. good boy. Like you see, when he finds, he has to stick on the door, on the bag, to prove that there's <laughs> something here. Yeah? Now you see him moving around, other bags, but he will not behave like he has behaved on that door, on that bag, eh? meaning that bag is a positive bag. Don't touch you don't touch with your bare hands. Oh my God, what's that? What's that? That's ivory, raw ivory. Oh, so like, which animal is it from? I don't know, an elephant. Mm. Oh. Do you want to hide it somewhere else? Yes, yes. yes. Please we'll do. do it one at a time. So. Go, Liam. I go next. Go, Liam. Go, 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 go. Yeah, it's okay. I'm used to that. Done. Done? It's me taking you. I'm so excited. Okay. So, so. Good boy. Oh no. So, oh, good boy. Ah, he found it. So, nope, nope, nope. Good boy. So, see ya. So, good boy. So, hey, good boy. Come. Back so. Eddie. Back so. Here. Good boy. Come so. Eddie. He found it. Good boy. Good boy. Liam put it inside. That's why he took so long. No. Eddie, the dog is amazing. So clever. And he's helping to stop poaching, which is something we should all be doing. But we are, don't you think? Ranger Lilian is helping to keep animals safe from poachers in the areas where they live. Dr. Margaret heals them when they get injured. And Caroline trained Eddie to sniff out the things that poachers stole from the animals and they end up in jail for their crimes. That makes me feel better. We are working together to protect each other from people who want to harm us all. I think we need to make sure that we don't forget what we've all learned. We're learning every day. I've learned um, that uh, poaching is not good. And every time someone poaches, or kills an animal, the less we have animals for um, our future. You know, we should actually be going to different people and be telling them not to poach because it's not right and telling them that you know your grandchildren won't um, have any animals to see. The elephants are very smart. Yes. And they have good memory. If more poachers kill more animals around the world. There won't be any animals left, only domestic animals. Something extinct is something which is no longer there. Like no longer. dinosaurs. If any animal species gets extinct, yeah. it impacts on all the other animals, all the other wildlife.
Which bit? They all said so many important things. <laughs> the bit about extinction. Yes. That's not going to happen. Not if I can help it. <laughs> That's a spirit, Gigi. We must tell everybody everything we know to help keep animals safe because we know when people know better, they usually try and do better. What else should we do? I know. <laughs> let's look, let's ask, let's love. And don't forget to make it fun. Are you enjoying Engine? Post your comments on our Facebook or Instagram page at Engine TV Africa. Has the show changed the way you look at science, the way you approach learning, the way you see the world around you? Let us know and you might be invited to appear on the show.